things do you know? We have car seats, we're gonna see a stroller, and literally, we are here live in New York City, no joke, no green screen, no nothing. I am on the corner of, I had a look, 95th and Amsterdam, and we're here at Albi Baby. Albi Baby is one of the last brick and mortar stores in New York City, family owned and operated, really, really, really fantastic customer service, which of course is what you want in a baby store. But we're gonna go in, we're gonna see the car seats, Alana's already waiting for us, but I wanted to give you guys a scope that if you live in the tri-state area, Albi Baby is where you're gonna wanna come to. Also, they have a fantastic Great online store. So right don't get there. stressed. If you can't you know, get here, don't worry about it. We're gonna be putting links through for products throughout this entire event, but of course you could go anywhere to your local store and pick up these items. We got a lot of great questions. I did not neglect you. You will not be forgotten. But right now I wanna know, how's the sound? How do I look? Not like, how do I look like, oh, you look so young, Nat, for somebody that's 42, because that's how old I am. But I wanna make sure that you guys can hear me and see me okay. We will be giving away prizes. We're probably gonna stay live for about 30 minutes or so, I imagine. I did take off my duster as my Twiniversity peeps have told me that I should do. I hope I approve. But let's go on in. Come on in. Don't worry about it. You're good. I don't know why people apologize. They're not the ones standing outside with a camera. I never apologize. If you see a camera, go by. But come take a look. Let's go into Albie Baby. We didn't get that coffee, by the way. Now I'm having grave regrets. Seriously, is this not the sweetest? Come in for a second before we go over. And the leg roll down, so I can roll it up and put the upper. I want everything. I'm gonna say, oh no, I'm throwing things. I found the twins. Hi guys. They're the new Fred and Ginger. Oh my gosh, this is really sweet. So Albie Baby has everything from furniture to gear to of course your entire layout set. And I could literally just spend hours looking at this great stuff. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So let's like look through. I, we did find some dream items. Do they make this in a 2X? Feel how soft that is. Guys, feel how soft that is. Do you feel it? Oh. Don't tell people I'm rubbing baby clothes on my face. So this is older layout section. Look what they have. Mm -hmm. You guys know these things. So that's important. Also, we have like cover-ups and stuff like that that could be used in your stroller. Everything, look, we even have tights. Oh my God, guys. So there's a lot more to see. We're gonna go through the store. If you have a particular piece of baby, paraphernalia that you super duper love and you're like Nat my favorite part of a baby store is the chairs whatever you want to see tell us and we'll go take a look at it but let's go find a line Wait, I have to show them this you know I have ADD I can't control myself look at this tutu look there's unicorn there's rainbow unicorns in the tutu it's when I wish one of my twins was a girl I should have put one on each arm that should have been like my love <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Fancy meeting you here. I found her. Right where I should be, right? Perfect. Look at this. La, la, la. Three across. I love this red. Is this the same red that we were talking about? Yes. So we're well, I, you know, I don't know. Love it. It's red. I'm very particular about colors and I want to make sure. Now, since we're inside, can you guys hear us okay still? So we want to know how we sound to you. Should have actually got headphones for Laura. I thought about that. But give us a thumbs up, give us a little heart, something that we know that you can hear us. If not, we're we just gonna have louder. to get closer. Yeah, we can talk loud. We're, we're pretty loud. We have an air conditioner on behind Laura right now, but it's gonna be 80 degrees here in New York City. Cause you know it's October and that's what happens. So come on in, come on closer, come on closer. I'm gonna leave you on this side. I'm gonna go on this side for a second. Oh, okay. She's gonna leave me on this side all by myself. Hi everyone. Okay, I'm gonna pan. Hold on. Guys, I'm gonna stay over here and we're gonna stay close to Alana. I didn't leave you, I didn't go far, I did not go get that coffee, I promise you. But I'm gonna turn this over to Alana because truthfully she is the Diono expert. 
D. Ono expert. I'm doing it. I'm living the dream. We as New Yorkers, I'm sure I can't be the only one. I pronounce about eight different companies wrong, but this is one that I refuse to, but my brain has to click. Okay, are you ready to learn? Now it's time to learn. Take it away. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this morning. So we are here at Alby Baby, one of our amazing retailers that always carry our products here in stock and online. We have here our number one selling car seats um, that's been loved by over a million parents so far. So that's amazing that that many are out in the world. This is the Radian 3 RXT. And if you look at our model names, Good. the more letters you see, the more features the seat has. So just know if you're looking at a model name and it has, you know, more letters than it has more features. So. The Radian 3 RXT has a fully integrated steel frame. You can't see it, obviously, underneath the shell. It's um, totally lined with energy absorbing foam all throughout the car seat. So most car seats only have it like around the head and maybe on the back side, but we actually have it around the head, behind the torso, and underneath the tailbone. And the reason why that's important because you need some absorption underneath the baby's bottom during a collision. So that, that downward movement is the first movement that you make. And so the Radian 3 RXT has energy absorbing foam all throughout the car seat with that fully integrated steel frame. It's got a reinforced aluminum reinforced aluminum head support that has 12 adjustments for it. So uh, it's really, really stiff. I'm coming in. Yeah, it's stiff. And the reason why you want that is because this has to contain the child's head. If there's any injuries that we see in car crashes, it's the head injuries. And so you really want to contain that child's head during a side impact collision. And that's why we have it reinforced here around the head support. And of course, the whole entire seat is reinforced with the steel frame. And then there's aluminum tubing going behind the back. But let's talk about also, um, I'm all into safety, but I know parents want comfort and beautiful fabrics and to match your car or just match what your child's style is or maybe your lifestyle is. So this seat is completely redesigned cover with beautiful colors, beautiful fabrics, whether you want to match your car or match your lifestyle. And then if you'll come around the back here, Nat, this is all new. The whole entire back of the car seat is now covered with the beautiful fabric. So it's not gonna ruin your vehicle seats. And everything is tucked away here. All you have to do is open up the back and that's gonna give you your safe stop, your top tether, and the super latch. Ooh. And then there's an opening here for the top tether as well. Let's talk about top tethers just for a second. Always utilize the top tether forward facing. And we're one of the few seats that allow top tethering rear facing as long as your vehicle uh, manual lets you do that as well. So that's just a safety tip. The other thing, that has changed is you'll notice our manuals this is where it should be I don't know what they've done with the manual we'll have to go looking for it but your manual will be tucked back here we actually have it in English Maybe it's on one of the other seats. it might be although it might not be it might be in the box no oh, here it is Yay! Yay! so right here it's English and in Spanish version so we have them here everything gets tucked away nice and neat and tidy you'll notice our bell path is lined in red here and the rear facing belt path is lined in blue and then on the manual pages you'll see anything that has a blue lining represents the rear facing instruction and anything that has the red you've got i want to see that again yeah so the red is rear and yeah. the blue the, is forward the blue is rear the blue is rear so that's kind of in line so when you see a blue edging to the manual you know that's the rear facing instruction and you find the blue label that will get you to the right belt path. And when you see the red, now you know we're talking about the forward facing installations. Okay. And you should always use the red belt path. So just matching together to keep things a little okay. bit simpler for you. Please read the manual. <laughs> Go ahead and nickel and register the product. And you, you notice the registration card is attached and there's a reason it has to be attached by law. And you should register just in case there are any recalls or safety notices on the seat that will notify you directly and you won't miss out on any of that news. So it's very important that you register your car seat um, no matter whose brand I that you're love buying. The colored instructions. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and you know, we kind of simplified the instructions a little bit, so hopefully we, we'll find out that's a good or a bad thing. But um, nice, <laughs> nice little uh, booklet. It's online, so if you do use your, lose your booklet, it's always online. But please sit down and read the manual. I know we sat down and read the manual to our Keurig coffee maker. So yeah, Laura's raising her hand. 
So this is definitely one manual that you must read. Um, it's a life-saving device, so yes. pretty important that you do it right. A lot of Andrew wants to know what's the weight minimum. The weight minimum we start at five pounds with our car seats. You want to make sure that your baby's shoulders are reaching that bottom harness slot. Okay. So until they reach that bottom harness slot, you might want to you know wait on transferring to a convertible, depending on just depending on their torso height. Um, what is the belt path? The belt path. That's a very good question. That is where your seat belt is going to be routed through, or your latch strap, is one it or the other. Than the latch? So seatbelt or latch are both safe. Okay. You want use one or the other on our product. There's very few products that allow you to use both. And the reason why we tell you to use one or the other is because we only test it that way. So if you try to do both thinking, oh, it's got to be safer, then you're really doing the testing yourself and we don't want that to happen. So just do one or the other. Seatbelt's just as safe. The seatbelt actually is designed to take about 6,000 pounds of restraining force, whereas the latch strap is just made for car seats. So it's going to take about 1,500 pounds of restraining force. So yes, the seatbelt is just as safe, but that's a very good question and one that we get often. I have a question too, and this is, by the way, how this is probably going to go because they're too excited. Yes. Um, washable covers come off. We want to know the cleaning details. Yeah, so cleaning details are in the manual. You may wash this in a machine, front loader or no agitator. So hold on. So the covers, where does it come so, like? Is this whole piece? Yeah, the, the whole thing will come off. So you unzip it and this just comes off and you'll fold it, you know, just rotate it out. You undo the, the harness strap. You don't have to take it off the splitter plate or anything. You just have to unbuckle it and the whole thing comes off without having to you know, redo, you know, putting the harness straps back on the splitter plate. But spot clean is totally fine. Oh, too. spot clean is fine. No harsh abrasives, no harsh chemicals, you know, nice mild soap and water and you're good to go. And, you know, if you have a child that is, a, you know, just that messy child, the one that's barfing all the time, the one you're having accidents with all the time, I say buy an extra set of harnesses, buy an extra cover. Absolutely. Just so you have it available. Wait, how do we do that? Oh, you go to us.theono.com and you can order replacement parts. Wait a second. <laughs> this literally a, is a news flash. Yes. News flash, because I know you guys could hear me, um, which is kind of weird that, like, hello, I'm really over here. Um, but I'm, I, so I could just do this yes. automatically. Do I automatically. could register for them as well to have a backup automatically. So just in case the car seat changes, I always it. have yeah, the right. Yeah, you can purchase extra parts and you will have it available to you, huh. which I think is important. If you're do you know how part, much that is? You don't have oh, to. I don't know off the top of my head. Good. Well, we're going to find that Scroll out. Scroll to the so. very bottom of our website. We might not have them up yet because we're just now getting all new parts and pieces in. Oh, you, it's gone crazy. Yeah. If you Guys, could. hearts, thumbs up. Let them show like show some love on this Scroll one. Scroll to the bottom of our website page. Oh, my gosh. Replacement parts, and that's where you can shop for your replacement parts. Um, I'm giving it hearts, too. She's I'm giving it hearts as I'm well. I'm doing it myself. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of thought went into the seats. Um, when we talk about it, putting on the base, we also color coded things. You'll see yellow and a blue dot, and underneath the bottom here is a corresponding. I'm, I'm making that go through. all over the place. We're coming through. We're coming through. So you'll see when you install the, the detachable base for rear facing, there is a yellow and blue dot, and you just know to match it up. And it's going to go down here on this bottom bar. And make sure you lock Aww. the locking mechanism so it stays on there. And now we're ready to go. We're facing. Wow. So a lot of people think this seat doesn't recline very far for rear facing. And I'm telling you what, kids are super comfortable. And this also has memory foam, we, you know, right here on the seat bottom. So your child's going to be very comfortable. Oh, am I on your way? No, I was getting Laura with this pole. <laughs> Don't hurt, Laura. So the seat has memory foam. Our infant, so, yeah, our infant support cushions. Oh yeah, super soft. You can see the memory foam oh gosh. underneath yeah, here. Replacement memory foam. Yes, there is replacement, replacement memory, memory foam. foam. Can I get this in a queen size? Please? I know, really, exactly, exactly. Uh, the infant inserts can be used at your discretion. We don't have a certain weight limit that you can use it to. You're basically looking at your child. Most most kids are outgrow the the head support pretty quickly but for those slender kids that just don't seem to fill out yeah unlike my kids that filled out to like 30 pounds in five months <laughs> you know that you can still keep them in the infant insert as long as as long as you want oh my gosh i think you should do the honors and i think that we should do a ten dollar starbucks gift card oh because i want coffee and i feel like if i can't have it other people should yeah, well, yeah we so have our coffee 
So, what is the, this, the name of this seat is? The name of the seat is a Radian 3 RXT. Okay, so you're never going to spell Radian. I just want to be like honest with us. Hold on. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to say I heart the RXT. That's good. How's that? That's, that'll work. I heart the RXT. If you want to win a Starbucks gift card, it's going to make. Hold on. Where am I? I'm right over here. Oh my gosh. But come on. I, we're doing prize time all day. You don't even have to say prize time because I'm so excited that we get to play here. Plus, we're like in this crazy store that I've actually never been in. So I know. So look. None of us. We're horrible. Have you? So we have it I've, as I've a team. I've worked for Deano seven years, and I have never been to this We've never store, been here. So. Oh, all right. I'm turning you back. I'm all giving right. you back. Okay. Great. So we have so we have more questions too. All right. Good. And just Fire in away. general, when do we know to turn out to, to you know? Let's say we do, we want to buy the infant car seat and then go to this. Do we do that before our infant car seat is kind of done with? When do we transition to this? You want to, you can keep your child in your infant, in the infant seat up to the maximum height and weight of that infant seat. Generally speaking, generally, babies outgrow their infant seat once they're, there's less than one inch from the top of their head to the top of the shell. Okay. Or you're just looking at that baby and they're trying to sit more upright or they're fighting you getting in that seat. Or they're just looking a little squished and please 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 take your babies out of your out of the car seat don't leave them in it all day i know some of you are on kid three four five maybe yeah. and have the twins but you know take those kids out of those car seats it's just better for their hip development their brain development their head development you don't want them getting flat heads so take them out but once they've outgrown the height and weight of that car seat whichever comes first then you can transition them to the Radian 3 RXT, or you can start them in the Radian 3 RXT from birth all the way to potentially booster mode. We can keep a child rear facing to 45 pounds in this car seat, which wow. is really awesome. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends using the car seat rear facing to the maximum height and weight of the car seat. We have kids that are staying rear facing up to four and five years old in our seats. And I know that sounds silly to some of you, but when you're talking about the head, the neck, and the spinal column on a child, it's not strong enough to withstand a frontal collision. Yeah. And so you're just optimizing their protection by keeping them rear facing. And I dare say, even in side impact collisions, mm -hmm. they're safer rear facing because most side impact is not a dead, you know, side impact, you know, dead on. It's more at a frontal component. So then the whole back of this car seat is protecting the head, the neck, and the spinal column. So, you know, they're not uncomfortable. Now, one thing I thought Max was um, screaming in his car seat all the time because he was, you know, uncomfortable. And what is happening with your, especially your newborn or your, your baby or even your toddler, they are wanting to see you, smell you, touch you, feel you. They, they're used to you know having their eye on you, and so they definitely are comfortable. They're just they're not used to they're, they're never used to it. It's kind of like if you see animals why they carry the babies on their backs all the time. Mm -hmm. You know they keep them close. So rather than always trying to you know put baby down, bring baby closer when they seem to be getting upset. That's just going to calm them down even more. Which is why I'm so glad we're in the baby carrying Yay. business now. So I've learned a lot through the baby wearing. We have a winner. <gasps> Congratulations, Julie. We're very happy for you. Everybody say congratulations to Julie because it's nice. Yay. Round of applause, round of applause. Um, we had another question. And so it was just how many pounds should they be rear facing again? So to the maximum height and weight of the car seat. So for the Radian 3 RXT, you can actually go to 45 pounds or once you have less than one and a half inches from the top of the shell to the top of the head. So I'm going to ask you guys, don't repeat it. It's only been a second. How many pounds are we going to be rear facing in this car seat? Okay, and this is going to be an important little bit of trivia for those of you watching now. You're going to need that information later. And I'm not doing it to make you guys study. I'm doing it to keep your kids safe. That's right. Okay, so this is, you know what it is. I'm not repeating it. Shout it out. Remember the stats. We're coming back to it. Okay. Go okay. On. Oh, good. Everybody's so excited. Awesome. So okay. once you decide once you decide to turn your child around forward facing and, you know, if it's at two years old, you've done great. If it's at three, fantastic. Four, you're, um, you know, you're amazing. 
don't feel bad if you have to turn your child around sooner because everybody's family dynamics are different mm -hmm. and you have different situations, you have medical needs, whatever it might be, but just you know, try to do it for as long as possible. But then you go forward facing up to 65 pounds in the harness Ooh. with the Radiant 3 RXT. We want to leave children in a five point harness longer because the strongest parts of our bodies are the collarbones and the pelvic bones and this is going to spread the crash forces over the strongest parts of the body so keeping them in that five-point harness keeps them positioned pre-positioned before mm -hmm. a collision and just like a race car driver they're staying safer is that a good segue? It's a totally good segue. Tell us about so it. We're you, so proud. So if you listened earlier about my story of how I got started in this child passenger safety world, you know I was a neurotic, nervous mom about my son when he was four. Well, he's now 22, and he's the youngest Porsche driver and instructor, and he's a race car driver now. So what is happening? Everybody says, well, aren't you worried? But he's actually safer in his race car than he is driving out here on the streets of New York. No offense to New Yorkers, and he's safer than even <laughs> in our set, in our streets. But he's now in a six-point harness. He's got a Hans device. He has a helmet on. He's got a roll cage oh around gosh. him, a flame retardant suit, and a fire extinguisher in the car. So hey, get out. That's crazy. That's safe. I love that the uh, the boy that inspired your entire career is now driving race cars. And you know what warms my heart even more about is he's actually teaching teen driving uh, schools, and he actually I didn't think he was gonna like it, but he actually likes it. He likes when the light bulb comes on, and he thinks he's making a difference in yeah. these teenagers' lives because once our kids are teenagers, these frontal lobes turn off, and then the stats go up even higher for teens that are you know, killed and injured in car crashes. So start them off always buckling. You guys always buckle too because kids are going to do exactly what we do in the car. So if you're riding around not buckled, you know, that's, that's okay. We got babies crying in the background. <laughs> We're yeah. in the baby business. Um, go ahead and you want to set the example for your child. Okay. Forward facing harness. I mentioned the top tether. Let's talk about top tether. Let's do it. So this is a top tether. You'll find it on every harness car seat that goes forward facing. We have to have it here in the US and in Canada. The top tether is gonna get attached to a designated point in your vehicle and check your vehicle manual because the anchor points are located in many different locations. The top tether will keep this top of the seat back and keep your child's head from moving forward about four to six inches in a collision. So that's gonna be real important, especially if you have one of these tiny cars or maybe you're really tall and you're sitting too far back and you know that your headrest is right in front of your child's head. No matter how tight the car seat is, no matter how snug the harness is, everybody's moving forward in a crash and so you don't want your child's head to hit the vehicle seat in front of them. So if I, oops, sorry, if you, I if meant you, to, I, put, I went like that for a second. <laughs> sorry, everybody. If you get anything out of this Diono day, top tether, forward facing, tell all your friends. Most parents don't even know what a top tether is, so most don't get used, and it's a very important feature on any forward they facing love that car it tucks seat. Away. Yeah, it's very, it's an exciting feature. Well, but they we don't want it. it. But we don't want it to totally tuck away because you can keep it attached in booster mode too. So this seat, once your child reaches 50 pounds and at the fourth harness slot, you can potentially use this in booster mode as well. And you can keep the top tether attached, you can keep the lower anchors, the connectors attached as well because that doesn't have any weight you know, bearing on the, on the seat when the child is using the adult seat belt. Okay, Laura has a question. What if there's no tether point where I wanna put the seat? If there's no tether point where you wanna put the seat, you can check with your dealer. Um, all, be, all passenger vehicles have to have at least three. But you can check with your dealer to see if there is a designated point that you can order top tether anchors to be installed. I'm not promising you that they're there, but they might be there. So I would definitely opt for um, a place to put that top tether. Or maybe the other child goes there. Maybe the rear-facing child goes there. Or maybe the bigger kid that's just in a booster seat goes there. So technicians like myself can work with you to figure out your whole family dynamics and pick the optimum location for each child in the car. And even we, we consider carpool as well. So there's, you know, everybody's situation is different, but if you can get a top tether on there for a forward facing seat, all the better. Okay, now I have a question. So this little piece at the bottom. Yes. Okay, so this was a separate piece 
right? And now we're going to use this. We're not going to use this 100% of the time. Dep it's going to be dependent on. That is only for rear facing. Just want In the store here, we use it for displaying because it made a perfect way to hold the seat more upright on the store shelf. But I do have some people that think you install it that way forward facing. You do not. This okay. is just for display purposes only. Okay. And you always must use our detachable base when you're installing it rear facing. Huh. Perfect. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Now let's talk about the colors. How many colors do we have right now? And what are, do we have, do the colors have So names? right now we have available red, gray oyster, plum, blue, I mean, and plum are available. Those are the four that are available. We also have this in black, a gray dark, so where the top portion is a darker gray and the bottom's a black. And we have this beautiful hero color called yellow sulfur. And it Ooh. is just beautiful and very unique to the industry. So, oh, I um, love getting it. a lot of great feedback on yellow sulfur. So as we get more stock in, they'll become available on our website. All right. Now we happen to have a car seat right next to you and we are going to do a real car seat install in a little bit, but I think maybe this is a great way to start of how we could like, this is our car. And now we're going to do, we'll rear, do rear facing. facing yeah, rear facing is the way, because we're going to do forward facing in the actual car. Right. Uh, so can we please? Yeah, so you'll see, here that God the, bless. you'll see here that the anchors are located down here. Some anchors are completely visible in your vehicle and some are not. Check your vehicle owner's manual to see where your anchors are located. Uh, we're going to pretend this is an outboard seat, so meeting, you know, door by the door. Um, Sometimes you want to install it in the center, but you can't borrow the anchors from each side. You just have to check the, the vehicle manual. We allow borrowing up to 14 inches apart, but if you're having twins, you're probably going outboard to outboard, yes. <laughs> I would imagine. Or maybe not. You might go side by side so that... What's well, that? We need that. Oh, yeah, oh no, right. we need that. Yeah. She was not paying attention. Laura! <laughs> <laughs> so um, you could go side by side with our seats as well. They're narrow enough to fit three across a most mid-sized vehicle, or it takes it takes less space up if you have other passengers or other car seats in there. Again, I'm gonna uh, attach the detachable base, and then simply set the whole bottom of the car seat down. I'm gonna sit down here. Okay. You wanna put sit it all the way on the vehicle seat, even this portion. Um, has to fit entirely on the vehicle seat. Hide that. <laughs> now we do have one little twist in this seatbelt, and it's a little finicky. I've been warned, and I can feel it already. <laughs> oh, Gabby, they really are great. They love. We're we're, we're they're loving our seats here. Oh, guys. I am so glad. So there's one twist in the seatbelt here. We do want to try to have flat seatbelts or latch straps going through the belt path. Hold on. Wait. 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 What, what? are you doing? What are you oh, doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I am going I'm through. In. I'm going through the rear-facing belt path. I just don't know okay. if the seatbelt's going to cooperate Hold with on. me. Show us where we're going in on this side. So you see the blue belt path, and it says rear-facing. Yes. It also says do not install this met by this method for a child weigh, weigh more than 35 pounds, me meaning the latch, okay. um, because once your child's 35 pounds, you have to use the seatbelt. Okay. Um, I just go ahead and install with the seatbelt. <laughs> um, it just makes life a lot easier. So you bring it out the other side and you buckle it in. Now here's one of the tricks. Um, and again, we want to make sure it's it's flat. We have one twist in here. Seat belts are going to lock one of two ways. Up here at the retractor or down here what's called the latch plate. Most vehicles switch at the la at the retractor, and so you would pull the seatbelt all the way out until you hear this click and this ratcheting. This one doesn't do it, but it'll ratchet, and then come closer to the buckle because this is going to give you the best leverage because this is what you're trying to pull it through to tighten down this, the lap portion of the seatbelt, and then to check for a tight fit, you're going to take one hand at that belt path. I'm basically, you know, down here. And I'm giving it a tug side to side, front to back, and it should move less than one inch. Don't check up here, because if you move it up here, there's nothing securing it here. This is what's taking the crash loads. This is where it's secured. So this is where you want to make sure the belt is tight and locked. Latch limits? Latch limits. So all of your anchors in your vehicles have latch limits. 
different car seats have different limits because obviously our seat weighs more. Uh, the total weight limit, child and car seat is 65 pounds on the anchors. And so each of us have different weight limits on our car seat. So this is 35 pounds. You would take off the latch, reinstall it with your seatbelt. So what I propose is that once you get the seat, go ahead and try both ways, just so you know that it's gonna work properly with the seat belt. I would say this, this um, car seat installs greatly within about 97, 98% of the vehicles out there. So go ahead and try really all modes. You wanna try rear facing, you wanna try foot. If you're gonna keep your car for a long time, try all the modes and making sure that the seat works in all the different modes so that you know it's gonna be ready. So where are some pitfalls that people may fall into when installing a rear facing seat like this? Well, believe it or not, um, I see people using the forward facing belt path when it's rear facing, oh, yeah. uh, so that's a big pitfall. Um, that seat will rotate the wrong way during a collision. I see people that don't lock the seat belt. That's one, and that's another pitfall. And then I just see people that don't get it tight enough. Yeah. So the key is getting, you want the seat belt tight, you want the harness snug. So just remember those two things. And really for anybody's brand car seat, when you're doing a, a a seat belt install, tightening down here near the buckle is going to get you the best best leverage and be able to get it tight. And one trick you can do is once you've gotten it as tight as you think you've gotten it and you still have movement, I would unbuckle the seat belt and let the webbing feed back in one or two clicks and then rebuckle it and get that thing in there rock solid. Now, is it possible to install these in captain's chairs and minivans? Yes, absolutely. That's probably one of the easiest places to install them. It's, I mean, this is a captain's chair. Uh, whether it's a captain's chair, whether it's um, even just a, a center seat, you're going to be able to install the seat pretty much anywhere. You do want to make sure that the vehicle manual says that you can install a car seat in that seating position. If it has latch, you know you can install a car seat in that seating position. You do have some center seats, even with a radian, might yeah. be way too small. You don't want um, the seats sitting on the buckles or anything like that. So, you know, obviously it's just common sense things. But now, as a, as a car seat safety tech, when you're doing an install, do you literally measure the back seat across? Like, how do you estimate? Because it can't just be the exact measurements. You probably need a little wiggle room, no? You, you do need a little bit of wiggle room because we kind of bump out here, right? So we always say measure, get in the back seat and close both doors and measure door handle to door handle. You need about 50 four inches across and just keep in mind you're going to do a seat belt install for all three because if you use the anchors the lower anchors you are stuck with that seat being in that position whereas with the seat belt you can kind of fudge it over a little bit and, and make more room for all three of the car seats so reiterating we do not use the latch in this configuration it just depends on your vehicle i mean if you have I mean, I had an F-150 and it was no problem <laughs> using the latch because it's just a big bench seat, but um, it's just going to depend on your vehicle. You can, you're just going to get a lot more wiggle room when you do it with a seatbelt install. Okay, so seatbelt install, one or the other for the test for my children at home. <laughs> what is the weight limit of this? So if we have this seat in this configuration, what is my weight limit for a $10 Amazon gift card? See, I told you, you had to pay attention. There's going to be pop quizzes throughout the day. Rear facing weight limit. Rear facing weight limit. Oh, guys, not everybody was paying attention. Oh, Carol? no. Oh, okay, no. Wait, they some... might be thinking of our other product that goes even higher, but this We're one. We're talking about this, this one today. Yes. Okay, Jewel, pick a winner and then let us know. So, this is really cool. Look, if my baby was in here. There, look at him go. So let's talk Could about, yeah, let's about our harness pads. So obviously we have nice thick plush harness pads. There is a little bit of grip on the back of them, which plays into a forward facing child. Look so, who's here. Aww. It's Mr. Lion. So rear facing, rear facing, you don't have to use our harness pads, but forward facing you do. And when you do have a child rear facing, you want to make sure, one of the easiest ways, everybody always asks me how to adjust the harness. And by the way, we have a nice, easy glide adjustment on our on our harness adjuster now. So what does that mean? So you know, our old uh, our old product kind of had a click ratchet, click ratchet. You know, okay. at the end, this just does one smooth pull. So what I want, I advise parents to do is always buckle in the center buckle first, leave this open, pull so that the 
adjust your strap, snugs up the harness, and then do the chest clip last, and then move this to armpit level. And the strap should be at or just below the child's shoulders, and you should not be able to pinch the webbing up here at the collarbone. Okay. Okay. Your little right. line doesn't have a collarbone, but that's the proper fit of a harness. Like, <laughs> we should have brought a doll. We should have. Oh, he's got a doll. Oh, they're doing it. Oh my gosh, there he was. He has no shoulders. That line is the worst. So I would, I would take these off for, you know, a newborn or a smaller child, but you must use them forward facing because it's going to help. Andrea, I appreciate that you're not just going to make up a number. I do. We appreciate that. She's not making it up. She's not yeah. making it up. That's good. We got a lot of good answers. Aw, right? here's Caroline. Hey. She used to be named Gertrude, but nobody ever got it right. I like Gertrude. Okay. So now she's Caroline? All right. Yeah, so the strap, the straps are probably not She's correct right now. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Put her in. So if we were putting her correctly, these straps would be at or below her shoulders. I think she likes you, Alana. She does like me. Most babies like me. By the way, we have a lot of great um, new videos on our YouTube channel that talk about proper use and give all kinds of safety tips. So these straps are too high on her, but just for the purpose of demonstration, we're going to go ahead and snug it up and then do the chest clip last and make sure the chest clip's at armpit level. And then you would just check to make sure that you can't pinch the webbing. So, you, you know, for those of us that lock down our kids in the car seat and they're screaming bloody murder, you don't have to do that. Obviously, this has to be all snug up here, but, you know, you'll clothesline them if you keep that chest clip. Yeah, so that's got Yeah, you would have to have it come down. So, so how often would you make adjustments? Do they, you do it daily? Do you check weekly? Is it, do you set a reminder in your phone? How do people make sure? <laughs> so you should be adjusting it every single time. Loosen it up to get the kid out because it's more comfortable. Put them in, snug them up, put the chest clip at armpit level. You should do it every time because we're all, especially as winter, you know, the fall's coming in, we're all in different thickness of clothes and clothing. And so you want to make sure that harness is as close to the body as possible. If you put them in big, thick, puffy coats, number one, they're so uncomfortable. Yeah. Number two, you, get, you have too much padding in between the harness and the body, and all that padding is going to compress, and you actually have a loose harness. So be sure that you don't put the kids in the thick winter coats. Put them in one layer, a thin jacket, put hey, them in the harness. can we do something? Yeah. Since we can, put her in the car seat and then come with me. Put her in the car seat and then come with you. Okay. Let's go over the clothes section. Show me what would be a good outfit for her to wear in her car seat. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. I'm, I'm acting like I know where the clothes are. That's right here. I okay. just saw it. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's see. So this is great for stroller, but, you know, it's got some furry in there and it's got some puffiness to it. Would not be good for the car seat. Okay. Yeah. So Andrea, although she did not know the weight of the car seat, she does totally agree that this is not shown enough. So we're, we, we're going to show you exactly what would be ideal instead of just saying, oh, it's a jacket like this. Right. So a jacket like That's this. That's why we're doing this. Still here. thick awesome. and still thick and puffy, you know, a sweater that's, this doesn't have a lot of weight to it at all. Oh, you know, that. think, think this sweater, oh, this is such a pretty sweater. Let me see. Take that oh, out. Oh my goodness. Let's take so a look. Cute. Try it on, Alana. Let's Try see. It on. I have, we're my little baby boys. So this oh. is nice and thin. Um, I don't know what material it's made out of. It's probably but, cashmere or something yeah, crazy. Yeah, probably, but that's going to keep them warm anyway. And just remember, your children are going to oh. be as hot as you are in big, thick, heavy coats. So they're, um, they don't need their temperature regulated as much as we think that yeah. they do. So, so what about like this? something like this? This fleece. So this fleece is, is still pretty thick. It is. It's plush. Um, it's, yeah, it's still... It still has some thickness. It's not as probably, you know, as much as this. And what happens is you... When you have all this puffiness, then you're not really paying attention to everything else, and and you just don't yeah. get that harness as snug. Now, why wouldn't bike. we use this? So this won't allow you. First of all, this uh, this won't allow you to get the crotch buckle in the right place, and this is just too much. So this is a really a big no-no. Uh, this is just for 
you know, using it in the home. But people do it, Alana. I so know. So why shouldn't we? I know, I know. But we, you know, when we know better, we do better, right? Amen. Yeah, I mean, a lot of us just don't know. You know, when we become parents, nobody hands you a book. Yeah. I mean, I, I distinctly remember being wheeled down out of the hospital and looking up at the nurse and going, you are coming home with me, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, I was scared to death. Um, but, you know, it just you just get, come by it naturally, I guess. Where's or, our or you sweet little up. girl jackets? So I, We saw the boy stuff, right? Well, or yeah. is it down this way? We need some. Oh, look at this one. Oh, See, my that's, gosh. That, that's pretty thick, too. You know, that's got some is thickness. Is that? Yeah. I feel like that's thinnish. Or, well... You know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's got some weight to it, you know, I would just, and not only that, but it's, it's got the collar and it's long and it just kind of gets in the way, you yeah, know. I um, love our shopping extravaganza. Look, so cute. Oh my See, goodness. See, and that's nice and thin. That's kind of a nice windbreaker, you know, and if you have a, a, a long sleeve shirt on underneath there, that's yeah. going to keep her plenty warm. So now is there something we should use over? Like, do we grab a blanket? Yeah, you can grab a blanket, you know, make sure if it's a newborn, you're like not- Like that you know, one? Yeah, you can just tuck blankets over the top. After you get the harness snug, then you can tuck blankets around the baby, making sure that it's not near, you know, their, their mouth and, and anything like that so that they stay safe. I love that we're looking for everything. And we're like, what else? What about like that bottom guy? Like, Is that check, too thick? Let's check out the bottom guy. We should have a little shopping excursion. Um, not bad, you know, it's got, it's, it's about three or, I'd say it's about three layers. So, I mean, that's not going to probably cause too much problem, but it does have some thickness to it. And then, you know, to me with this hood behind them, then the yeah. hood stuff behind their back yeah. and they're uncomfortable. So I would avoid hoods as cute as they are. Just Whoops. layers, uh -oh. guys. Uh-oh, she's wrecking the joint. I am, I am. Layers, cute guys. stuff. Where's a good blanket for the stroller? I'm looking around. We're looking around. That one was a little thin, the receiving blanket. I'm looking for like a good blanket. Like when you're buying stuff, what's down there? Well, those look like- are Those um, blankets? Those are towels or something. They're towels and swaddles and things like around. that. But you know what? Again, one extra layer around them is gonna help keep them. I mean, even, you know, something, of course, you know, you gotta be careful when you're putting all these beautiful blankets in the car, because, you know, <laughs> you just never know what happens to them. But, you know, something like this is gonna keep them warm over the harness. But again, you want to make sure you're keeping away from baby's air passage. We wish you were physically here too with us. Are you shopping? I, for a baby I don't, I'm not having. Yep, your yes. dream baby, your grandbabies. Uh, the boys are a little young. Congratulations to Lauren on Mom Squad mother, who's now a grandma. Yes. She's oh. the only grandma in a bikini at the beach wow. that I know. Ben, oh my gosh. Baby Benjamin's Lana. so adorable. He's the sweetest. That was my present yesterday from her daughter, was that I just wanted my own picture. It's nice that they turned off the AC for us. There's an AC over there that's been a little bit loud. Yeah, it's um, it's full force actually it feels now really it's good. good yeah, because we were I'm, dying before. It was, was getting, getting hot. hot. <laughs> Me too. Okay, so now what we're going to do here, Laura, I'm going to let you take this back. Okay? You need to. I'm yeah. already untethered. Look, I was tethered myself to my umbilical charger. We are now going to take a tiny bit of a break and we're going to finally get that coffee. And so far, so fantastic. I'm learning a lot. I'm excited though, to be honest, to see the forward facing install. Because remember, this is the one that I totally messed up with and the rear face. No, the rear facing, I think we're okay. The forward facing. So personally for me, this is a little like, uh, let's see if I could right the wrongs that I did so that you guys don't make the same mistakes. A Twiniversity family, will be joining us in a little bit. They are, they're a student in New York City, they're twins plus one. So we're gonna put the seats to the test with the three across. I'm excited, you're ready. We actually don't know what this car looks like. All I know is that well, we I- We know what it looks like. I just, you know, haven't done a three But we really cross. don't. What if there's like, you know, paper towels and Starbucks Oh napkins yeah, there the might, there's and definitely gonna be that. It could be anything. As my kids say, a dumpster what? on wheels. A, a dumpster, dumpster on it could be. Yes. Mine Goldfish. is semi. Goldfish crust, that's fine. Yes. That's like if there was an apocalypse, we'd like to have a little goldfish. Are we okay? We're doing okay. All right, so we are gonna take a tiny little bit of a break. We will be back with more prizes, but do not, don't forget, you have a chance to win a set of these car seats. Not any car seats, not like random car seats. We are going to, this is the RXT. Radiant right? 3 RXT. The Radiant 3 the RXT. Mm -hmm. I like it. So you have a chance to win. Jewel's gonna pop in a link below 
go register now. Tell your hubs to go register. Get your mom to do it if you need them for your mom's car. But don't miss out on this opportunity. It is a very, 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 very generous offer that I am very excited about. So we will see you in a few minutes over on the streets of New York City, back outside on a fire hydrant. Pray we don't get a ticket. We're doing it anyway because we're rebels. But we're going to install these car seats live just for you guys. So until we meet again in like 20 minutes, coffee. we're going to get coffee. See you later, kids.